book. But after 100 million users, the next person after 100 million will hustle for that one pie and he's going to use it to pass his KYC. But the rest of the things that most surely Flora have said is actually valid. If you are on your uh, queue, there is no timestamp. The queue will go as long as the algorithm and pretty much is random. I was on tentative since last year, February, March, and I pretty much got shift, uh, shift I think last three weeks, something like that. No more three weeks that I pretty, pretty much I got the migration as the case may be. And uh, for tentative, most of this tentative feedback comes from when we had what they call the mass KYC sometimes last year. And the mass KYC pretty much opened the threshold for many people to do KYC. But it also came with the challenges that validators did some, um, what's the right word? Validation that were not coherent. So pretty much uh, as Majit has said, you have passed KYC, you have not passed because it needed a second layer of verification. Kind of like confirming that what the validator did on your KYC application is as valid as it is because you see the algorithm around the kyc infrastructure is a machine learning algorithm and is learning from what we are doing collectively so the more we do the right thing the faster that that baby software or that baby algorithm learns from us because the whole idea about kyc is that hands will be off and the machine will be smart enough to pick information from any government approved ID in any part of the world, redact that information, compare it with the liveness check from the real feed captured by the human being and corresponds if the IDs are valid, correspond if the background is a valid government approved ID for, for a typical country and pretty much do it in a cryptographic manner and pass. So what we are doing in this formative stage is pretty much us helping the machine learning algorithm do the work in the future when pretty much all our hands are off and the blockchain uh, solution for KYC runs. Because you see, I often say this in many of spaces, among all the KYC I've seen as far as uh, the, uh, KYC is concerned, I haven't seen a complex decentralized KYC that stand that have stood the test of time and is fit to be a business product. I haven't seen a KYC that is fit to be a business product. Business product in the narrative of it being a solution for identity management, wherein security is a core, wherein scalability is a core, wherein privacy is a core. The last giant that has to do with people's personal identifiable information that caused her a lot of legal challenges was Facebook. Somehow, somehow, Facebook built a multimedia, uh, a social media platform where it has to do with people with their faces, vis-a-vis -vis their name, vis-a-vis -vis their addresses, vis-a-vis. -vis. And we didn't know that according to European laws, you don't have the right to have what they call personal identifiable information about her citizens without her giving you the express right. Before you understand, Mark Zuckerberg was pretty much having problem with paying fines and fines and fines up to problem up, up to the point where in uh, Facebook legal expert told him for the meantime, change the entity name to Meta while you deal with the dues and the fines and stuff like that. But from day one, the Pi, K, Pi Networks KYC have infused cryptography even at the point of data capturing of your ID. For everyone who have done KYC, you will understand that even before the data leaves your phone, the information is redacted. What do I mean by redacted? The, the aspect of the area of your ID that has to do with your personal identifiable information does not leave your phone. Your name, your height, your address, and anything that has to that has to route information to you as a specific uh, uh, individual does not even leave your phone. Only two things leave your phone: your image and the background of your identity. 
card or identity or whether it's a driving license or whatever the case may be and these two information is split into halves to two different validators the first validators verify your image is the face in this id the same with this face captured in this lifeness check the validator is to just say yes or no clear or not clear if it's no what's the reason why it's no the image do not match or the one on either side is not clear he does that you have passed kyc half or let me say 50 percent because your face or your image have been then the background is going to be sent to another validator does this background looks like a typical standard name premium name driver's license international passport of country nigeria the person said, of course, this is what we use in Ninja. Yes, it is. As soon as these two validations are, is a green, is a go, you now pass your KYC. And oftentimes, during the making reference to during the mass KYC, a lot of people without approval were pretty much approving things, including the paper in sleep, blah, 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 and things like that. So that tentative period was significant to pretty much call for a review or checking over what validators have done prior. Thus, you can see that even at the point of decentralized KYC, your personal identifiable information is protected in the sense that if somebody picks the ID that I uploaded during my KYC, he's going to just see a background of uh, a premium name slip. Of course, premium name slip is an is a government approved ID in Nigeria. And we're pretty much over 100 and whatever million. So how can he route that ID to me, Benjamin? Or pretty much if he now let's say, which pretty much looks like very hard, but let's assume the database of Pi Network gets hacked. Pretty much they'll have access to information. But what are the information they are going to see? They are only going to see pictures and backgrounds of IDs. No personal name, no address, no height, no skin color, if the case may be. That's pretty much if your country's government approved ID has gone to the detail of pretty much giving your skin color or pretty much the, the colors of your eyes or probably whether your hair is brown or pink. Whether, those things will not be captured because even before data leaves your phone, at the point of you applying for KYC, that data is redacted. I mean, those things that have to do with personal, like the, the information that personally identifies you is cleaned. You will see it black, black, black. So let's assume the Pi Network's database or, net or blockchain is hacked. They'll only see pictures and backgrounds of government approved IDs. So for instance, they see my picture. They will see typically a black guy. How can they route that this black guy is from Africa? How can they route that even in Africa, Nigeria? How can they route even Nigeria from the north? How can they route even in the north, which state? Because pretty much a black American can also look like me. A black Briton can also look like me. How have we forgotten that pretty much those from the Caribbeans and the West Indies pretty much looks same skin color? So how can you now identify that this is the security future fused into the KYC that has given it the technology approval that stands so unique when compared to other KYC infrastructures. And from my understanding, this looks best fit to serve as a business product. Let's say a country wants to pretty much redefine identity management for her citizens. We are now, uh, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about an era where we have moved to Web 3.0 in an institutional perspective, meaning institutions, countries, departments of states and stuff like that are adopting blockchain-based solutions. We have passed narratives wherein blockchain can power. And country XYZ is thinking about a cryptographic, or a security powered identity management solution for her citizens. For sure, though, because they'll, they'll ask questions what happened if database is hacked? 
would an external person from a different country outside our domain have access to information about our citizens? That's a threat. And pretty much the solutions that we are collectively empowering is showing that if, first of all, the blockchain looks very difficult to be hacked, but there is no such thing as impossibility. So let's agree with that. Then we come to the fact that even if it gets hacked, it will be some readable. The information that can even be nearly understood is the final rate, you know, the final hash of every verified data, which is pretty much the cryptographic hash because your KYC that is passed in the blockchain is a cryptographic hash. My KYC that is passed in the blockchain is a cryptographic hash. But if there is a data warehouse where that keeps the information that was collected from our devices, pretty much is going to be some uh, pictures of uh, faces of some people and pretty much videos of some lifeness checks and pretty much backgrounds of some IDs. And that has met the rating of scalability, security, and privacy. Now, if having checked all KYC solution, including uh, the guys that we wanted to uh, give them uh, the job for doing our KYC during the pilot KYC phase, in the era of Web 3.0, where pretty much uh, we are talking of Internet of Things, we are talking of machine learning, we are talking of artificial intelligence, which infrastructure can easily bear blend with those new age infrastructural trends. This is the implication, or this is why tentative have to take its course. This is why validation need to be done rightly. Because there's a machine learning. And by that time, a country wants to do the data collected by the, uh, the application of KYC and the validation of those in Pine Network, yes, the yes from that country have generated valid information for machine learning of that specific country to pick any data uploaded to her and do KYC in split seconds. Because that machine algorithm have so much learned from the collective KYC application of the citizens of that country who right now are called pioneers. And learn from the validate, collective validation of the validators of that country who right now are called pioneers. Because by that time, they will not call on us to validate. It's going to give a security scare. Countries will not agree us to do validation. Who are we? What do we read? But we are giving input to the machine learning algorithm to independently pick information, redact, compute background, and give close to 99% certainty that this is a valid citizen XYZ country. Thus, for what we are doing as validators, we will be paid. And for you who is requesting for validation, you will pay for us to validate you. This is what your one pie goes for. Of course, by that time, the cotton will not turn around and collect dollars, no. They will still collect pie, making it pretty much the first truly, uh, the first truly solution that is 100% utility powered by pie. Not to think of the many works behind the scene that are really building solutions so that we can have many options to use our pie. But trust me, the first option available for you to use your pie is through KYC. So it's in the perspective of this that we should understand that waiting, understanding, doing the right thing only makes the process faster and better. If validators are because they want to do it in the Nanja spirit and within their room, they are still validating that paper slip. You will wait because it will be turned down. Even if somebody passed you, the algorithm can send you back to class one because it was the wrong document. It's important for you to understand that the, the, the players right now are doing everything so meticulous so that a wrong information cannot be captured in 
the algorithm mainframe of the machine learning infrastructure. We don't want to have what we call false positive or false negative. Something that on document you look as if it's right, but actually is wrong. Or something on document that looks as if it's the wrong, but actually is right. So this is what we call false positive or false negative. I hope pretty much right now, uh, the complaints, the, ag the anger, the argument for or against is pretty much put into perspective. We have done so well. Trust me, what we achieved in mass KYC was feedback that the algorithm can just open mouth eh, and swallow off, like in split minutes, and capture thousands and millions of data. But what have we during mass KYC? It then gives a lot of people room to just be doing a lot of things. And we, the validators, will have to own it up to how some of our colleagues didn't do the right thing. We didn't know that actually the, the core team pretty much expected something like that. So they had tentative face in wait to check and vet our validation process. Oftentimes, I used to tell those in my space, it is not a, a coincidence that one of the core team have pretty much a, a PhD in what she calls computational human anthropology. I had to go online and learn and ask, what is computational human anthropology? So it's pretty much a computer way of kind of like filtering how human beings think in layman definition. Thus, pretty much is like they are one, two steps ahead of us. Majid, thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Benjamin. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, you just you just explained a whole lot there, like so much, so much information, so much information.